Kevin Jordan asks an interesting question. You know, I might have to do a couple of these. Uh, no, I'll, I'll get through them. I'm just going to have to hurry up. Um, this is really interesting. Um, do progressives enjoy anything short of attempting to steal freedom and morality to heap into the giant broken hole that they have inside of them? I can't imagine Hillary or Barack really mining much joy out of their days. They don't seem to have many functioning relationships that don't share in tearing apart something or someone. In contrast, most of the conservatives I know jam their lives full of meaning, love, and passion. Is that one reason why they hate us? Yes, and it's one reason why they're uh, so good at politics because they, uh, politics is their religion, it's their philosophy, and their job. It's all three. Um, it's it's their religion, their philosophy, their passion, and their job. And it ties into what I said earlier. When you get right down to it, the collectivist ideal that the Democratic Party now represents is theft. They want to get free stuff, and they want other people to pay for it. And they talk about the rich, and the, they have all this money as if the, the, the fortune fairy just flew through the kingdom one night and you know, alighted on certain doors and ting, you know, you're going to be rich and the rest of you, you know, go to hell. Uh, I know a bunch of people who are rich and I know some people who are extremely rich and they have worked very, very hard and, and changed the world for the better. And the example I'd always go to for them would be Steve Jobs, who, who is by all accounts an awful guy and then by some accounts not nearly so awful as he's portrayed, but he's a great example of a guy with a vision that simply wouldn't let go. And he had billions of dollars and he earned it because without Steve Jobs, there wouldn't be one of these. There just wouldn't be. Um, maybe it would have eventually happened, but he made it happen. He made the technology happen. And because of his contributions that all of these kids enjoy, he got more than other people. And, you know, is it, it always comes, to look, to the, to the point of fairness. Is it, they talk about fairness as if wealth is just dropped from the sky like manna. That's what, some people have more than others. Is it fair that a brain surgeon gets paid the same as a guy who smoked doobies out in back of the 7-Eleven and, and is a clerk at 7-Eleven. Is it fair that he should make the same amount of money as the 7-Eleven clerk who basically partied and goofed off the whole time? Is it fair? It's not fair. There's only one form of actual fairness, and that's letting people do as much or as little as they actually want to or can. Anything else that's enforcing, uh, you know, equality is, is, is stripping you of, of, of freedom. And the reason that people vote for socialism is because there are more there are more people nowadays who would rather just sit out back and smoke doobies than there are people who'd like to get ahead in their lives and the more government benefits you provide the the easier the choice is and look put aside the fact that they're stealing money from those of us that produce things and put aside all of that just assume for a second that it was in fact actually free that you could in fact actually just print money there is nothing more destructive than sitting around watching TV and getting checks for work you didn't do. It is the worst thing ever. It's just, it's soul destroying. No wonder everybody is so angry. No wonder the inner cities are so murderous. What do you do? I mean, what do you have to look forward to? The smart ones in the inner cities are drug dealers. If I was born in the inner city, I'd be a drug dealer. What else have they got? Um, they're entrepreneurs and, and they're, they're smarter and tougher and more ruthless than the rest of the people in the neighborhood. But um, what about the rest of the people in the neighborhood? Why do you think they're doing drugs? Look, why are they doing drugs in the first place, right? Why do people why, forget about, uh, you know, having a beer at the end of the day? We're talking now about people who will risk their lives to steal copper wire out of a wall and whose arms are rotting for, off from gangrene from shared needles, you know, doing speed balls and stuff. Uh, why would you do that? It's only because you're so bored you're so impossibly bored and you're so completely hopeless in the sense that you're not the master of your life and you know you're never going to be. That life is just simply something that has to be endured until you die. And, and if you die of a drug overdose or die in, in a gang shootout, then okay, good. Let's get it over with. Um, they, they, don't, uh, they don't have anything to live for. And they've been made that way by the Democratic Party. That's, that's what they do. In exchange for their votes, they've been, they've been put in this eternal prison of, of being dependent on other people. And so now these rich kids, you know, because if, look, all these college students that are supporting Bernie Sanders, and you know, these kids at the social justice winnings in the video, they're going to the University of New Hampshire. These are really, really rich kids. One of the greatest questions in there, he asked this 
overweight man child. He says, well, you know, uh, I think he said, um, so which uh, 70-year-old socialist Jew are you going to vote for? And uh, and the, everybody says Bernie Sanders. And he goes up to this one guy and he says, uh, well, you know, Bernie Sanders uh, said he's going to break up the banks. And this kid says, um, good, I think they should break up the banks. And Triumph says, well, then how are you going to get hold of your dad's money? Bingo. They want a free education. And they want a free education because they want to free everything. They don't work. They don't drive. They don't. They don't, they don't do anything. They make perfect, they do, I take it back. They vote. Some of them do. Um, otherwise, it's the only thing they're allowed to compete in is who can be the biggest victim. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty damn ter terrifying. But they don't seem to enjoy anything, Kevin. I mean, look, there's obviously progressives who are relatively happy. But you don't become a progressive unless you're miserable, right? I mean, uh, not to, this really is kind of the truth, though, right? I mean, if you really think about it, if you're if you're a person who's trying to conserve things the way they are or were versus somebody who's trying to change everything, which one do you think is happier? If you're a happy person, you want things to stay the same. If you're an unhappy person, you want things to change. It's really pretty simple now that I think about it, right? Conservatives have to be happier than progressives because they want things to stay the same. Life is good, and, and it used to be better, but, you know, we want to hold on to this happiness. Progressives are miserable people who want to change, 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 and keep tweaking the dials until they get what they want. And what they want is all of the money that people that work hard and all of the power. That's the difference between us and them. We don't care. Because we're self-sufficient and because we're self-reliant and because we have codes of honor and because we're masters of our own destiny, we don't care what other people do. I, I don't care. I've been to billionaires' houses and I've seen unbelievable wealth and not only do I not resent them for it, I just don't care. In most cases, it's like, this is more than I could use. Uh, I'd probably have 30 airplanes, but, you know, it's like, okay. I mean, this house is too big. It's too big to be comfortable. But I don't care how rich somebody else is because I know that that wealth was created by that person's work and the work of the people that work with them, and it doesn't affect me. It doesn't make me poorer to be in the company of rich people, and it doesn't make me want to take their stuff. To the degree that I'd like something, it makes me want to work harder, and that's a nice motivation. But they, ultimately, they're hopeless. They're, they're, they're hopeless, and they know their limitations. Uh, they, you know, or, or they're not smart enough, but most likely, certainly in the case of these uh, social justice weenies, they're just too lazy. You know, they're just too lazy. They don't want to work. They don't have the attention span. They don't have the motivation. Why should they work? They've been given participant trophies. They'll, they'll just be participants. Why would they have the attention span to become a brain surgeon? Most of them. You know, there's a great uh, poster that I saw that I liked a lot. Um, um, somebody who somebody, uh, at 608 said, there are also people who cannot work with seven exclamation points. Listen, we're not talking about handicapped people, needless to say. We're not talking about people who are genuinely unable to work. Everybody that I've ever met understands that there are people, for whatever reason, are, are incapable of working, and, and these people need our help and support, and that's what civilized society is. We're obviously not talking about them. We're talking about people who, who can work and don't, and that's the huge majority of them. You know, that's the huge majority. It's not... It's ridiculous to say, you know, what about people who, who can't work? Obviously, we're not talking about them. Most of the people we're talking about are people who are just too... The, the, these millennials especially, they just seem so... It's not even laziness. It's, it's the second something... And look, it's, it's clear. It's, it's how they're raised. It's their environment. It's got to do with the Internet. The second something gets boring, they just click off to something else because there's billions of choices. You know, in the time it takes for you to watch one two-minute video, there's probably 20,000 videos have been added to the YouTube thing. So since there's always so many choices and the choices are instantaneous, then, then if the movie gets a little slow, we're going to click out of there. If, you're, if, you're, you know, if you've been given a, an opportunity, even on a silver platter, it's been handed to you on a silver platter. Yeah, okay, well, maybe I'll do it, but they didn't earn it. They, don't, they, don't, they didn't earn it, but it's given to them. Eh, and then it gets a little difficult. Nah, I got a little bored. And then, you know, bam. I'm terrified of the future. I really am. I know, and I said it earlier, I'll say it again, there are, needless to say, 
you know, and in fact, I've been talking with Charlie Kirk, and he thinks something like 40% of college campuses are conservative. It's really growing because if people are sick of it, I hope he's right. We're going to find out. But, um, you know, uh, with that said, uh, I, <laughs> it's not even a question of who's going to invent the new stuff. Who's going to maintain it? I remember what I was going to say. There's a great cartoon out there. I think I'm going to post it if I haven't already. And it's basically... Uh, it's a three-panel thing, but look, I can just tell it to you. Um, women on campus are saying we need to get, you know, the feminist saying, we need to get more women into STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. We need to get more more uh, women into STEM. And so there's this guy who's got a booth that says STEM studies, and then there's a woman's booth that says women's studies. And, and, and everybody's saying we need to get everybody to STEM, these feminists. And so they all go to women's studies, and they hold up signs that say more women in STEM because – it's easier to say we should have more women engineers than it is to go out and be an engineer. You see how easy it is? It's easier to, to signal your virtue and get up there and, and look noble and say we need to get more people into We need more women in the sciences and more women in engineering. Well, that may be true. But why aren't you in science and engineering, Miss Radical Feminist? Because it's harder than women's studies is, right? That's just cut right to it. Math degree, a science degree, especially an engineering degree, is much, much, much harder than a women's studies degree, which is essentially just a, a, a four-year vacation from reality, and, and, and six if you can get your master's, and eight if you can make a PhD out of it. So, you know, it's cartoon studies, or, you know, whatever. Okay. I've taken um, science courses, and I've taken uh, what we used to call rocks for jocks, you know, these kind of just, uh, you know, the impact of um, anime on society. It's three credits. It counts for humanities. But you major in that kind of thing, I'll tell you what. Um, so, anyway, they don't seem to have much fun. And I think, actually, that's a great thought that I had kind of on the fly. That's why I love doing the show. If they were nice people and if they were happy people, they wouldn't be progressive, right? They wouldn't be demanding change all the time until they get the free stuff. And then they'll keep taking until they put the people producing things in camps, which is what they always do. That's where it always ends up. And that's why this time uh, these these uh, makers are heavily armed. Um,